All right, well, that was a little awkward, but uh, with that deck lid removed, we now have full access to this trunk lid seal area where it mates up on a rubber seal to the quarter panel. So we can get this panel clamped in place, get the quarter panel section on, clamp that in place, and then basically taking well the two pieces together. So we're not dealing with two pieces anymore. We have one nice full section that we can take on and off whenever we need to. I always like to start with the larger panel because it's a little more critical to get everything aligned properly. Now, you heard that oil can. That's because the edges aren't hemmed or anything yet. But I want to take and join that up first and then we can worry about hemming it afterwards. lined up all our witness marks. See, see how well that art comes in to the buck. So that fits up really well. That's going to sit further back there. I shoot a clamp onto the sail panel area, line those lines up, make sure that uh, that fits well. I need more vice grips. Stay. And they magically appear. Line all that up. That's close. It's not too critical yet. What we're worried about is that area right there. So I've already started working this corner in. It's a little rough yet. We will need to take and flatten this bend over back out because this needs to have a bit of a reverse curve happen at the top here after we create the body feature line. But I don't want to create sections of body feature lines. I want to run one line all the way through afterwards. So we'll get this lined up up here. Excuse me. I should get a screw to drill. Earlier I started preparing all this through here, but uh, didn't quite finish scribing everything. So we're just going to get this screw back in place, line everything up, there we go. So now we can take and rescribe this, get it to fit properly, and uh, clamp it and weld it together. We also have to make sure that the flow from front to back is correct. We don't want to peak here. We want a nice, gentle, graceful curve coming down to the bottom. Now, that feels, that actually looks good there. Uh, I'm gonna stand back from the back, check out this curvature. See how it looks seamless from front to back. Now, this does come up a little bit up through here. That has to be brought down. And we'll adjust that when we get the fender on. Up there, oops, right there. We'll do a little hammer and dolly work. Bring that out a little bit. And uh, it'll be good. And then we have to take care of some of the little bumps running along that uh, seal area. Just again, hammer and dolly that was smooth afterwards. A lot, of, a lot of variables to consider when you're joining up panels in areas like that. It may look simple, but at the end of the day, there's a lot going on. So we have to make sure that everything fits in properly. Okay, let's get tacking, plenish that out a little bit. Later on, when we do finalize this upper feature for the body line, uh, we'll run that right into the back area. Gonna readjust the clamps a little bit. It's tricky to get in here right now. When you butt joining two pieces of metal together, you want them to be seamless before you even start tacking. You don't want one panel higher than the next, and you don't want an apex or a dip, because it'll be a lot more work to finish it. Up here, the clamp is in the way a little bit, so we're gonna put a tack here, remove the clamp, bring it down, and finalize that gap so it's perfect all the way through. Helps if you turn the gas on. Much better.
Okay, so that's coming in really well, nice and smooth. Uh, there's a bit of a dip through here, I have to bring that out. But what I was doing is, at first I can plenish the weld to stretch it back out where it needed to be. Because uh, when it cooled, it shrank a little bit. And then I did a bit of on and off dolly technique. So you're not directly hitting the dolly, you're kind of hitting off to the one side or the other side. And you're controlling the, the way the metal is behaving. I'll back that up with the dolly right here because it's a bit of a low spot. And I'll just take and work the area around it, drive it down, which will bring that up. Just like that. You can take a welding rod or some piece of straight edge to check your curvature, or you can take and glance down the panel and see how it's coming out. Flange here, we probably cut some of that away because we're a bit uneven as compared to this one, and I'll probably leave about a quarter inch, and then the fender will tie into that. Well, that wasn't some special effects. Uh, we just had a power outage. It's really hammering up there with that rain. I don't know what's going on up there, but uh, we're getting hammered hard. So I uh, don't know how far we're going to get today, but got the driver's side finished up. I'm going to go to the other side, get everything clamped in place, set up, weld that together. And at this point, we can move on and do the door skins, uh, which means we take these panels off and uh, have free access to the doors. Right now, these pieces are shooting past the door cut line, and uh, I need to establish the exact cut line locations on the doors, and then we can get these remounted, hemmed, and move back towards the rear. long quarter panel piece. So uh, we'll dress the back up a little bit there, but aside from that, we can call this piece done. Okay, let's try all this again. So it seems the camera battery died on me. So I'm gonna have to kind of back up here and uh, kind of re-illustrate what's going on. Which isn't the problem. Do the front edge of the door instead of both ends. Gives you practice for the second side, I guess. And it gives you an opportunity to double check all your lines and make sure that the math is correct. Okay, so what we have here, um, in order to get this door skin mounted onto the door structure, we have to create flanges around the perimeter. The bottom was bent, rolled over, and hemmed along the bottom edge of the door. It's caught basically catching the bottom edge of the door. We need to do the same thing on both ends here. And what we have here are three tape lines, one inch, quarter inch, and three quarter inch. So the one inch represents the flat bar that we have for the wireframe buck back edge of that one inch is the back edge of the front fender. So then I added another quarter inch, gave us a space back from that back edge of the fender, quarter inch, and that gives us the front edge of the door where the uh, flange bends over. So I added this third piece of uh, beige tape here to indicate the front edge of the uh, door skin. So when we take and peel off these two green lines, we have to take and add half an inch extra to the front of the uh, beige line. Otherwise, if we cut at the front edge of the line, we'll have no flange to bend over the door, door structure. So that's what I'm going to do now is take off these two green tape lines. You can see the markers already there. We 
added half an inch to that beige tape, just like that. It's good. And we mark that line. So anything past the front edge of this green tape line gets cut away. The green tape line is our flange. We roll that over. You don't need much more than half an inch. Less than half an inch is good. Half an inch isn't, you know, it's pretty much uh, the sweet spot. Any more than that, and it's a lot of hassle to get that to roll all the way over, and it's not necessary. So we're going to take and pull off this tape line here. I've indicated B for bend, a little arrow here to indicate our cut line. The same was done at the back. So we're going to take this door skin back off the car, cut the two edges. Hopefully our math is right. I've just double checked it twice, but you never know. And get the flanges uh, bent over. And then we'll get the door skin back onto the car. And hopefully, I think I'll get the front edge bent. Perhaps the back edge just slightly bent, so it just catches on to the structure. Because we still need to do some work inside the doors. I don't want to get these door skins on just yet. Uh, this top edge through here, we still need to take and roll this over to the appropriate curvature. Back here, it's fitting out quite well. We need to create a crease through here. And we can't do that until uh, this is bent down. So we'll bend, put the crease through there. And then there's a slight convex shape through here that extends back and into the trunk deck here. So that has to happen after the crease gets put into the panel. So there's a number of things that have to happen, but if we don't hem the door and attach it to the door structure, this thing is going to constantly move around and you don't want to see the, a jog in your main body feature. It's going to look hideous. Let's uh, get this door skin off the car again and uh, cut out what we don't need and start bending our flanges.